Good evening to you and thanks for joining us on this Friday. It is a big election here year here in New York State with the governor's race on the ballot and a little more than 14 weeks away from Election Day. This disturbing incident that we showed you last half hour of Republican candidate Congressman Lee Zeldin attacked during a campaign event. Well, this half hour we're digging deeper into the charges against the attacker and this issue of bail reform. Let's start with the video of what happened. It was around 8 o'clock last night outside the VFW post in a little town about 15 minutes southwest of Rochester in Monroe County. The attacker can be heard saying, quote, you're done as he went on stage, was grabbing at Zeldin. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office arrested 43-year-old David Jacobonis and charged him with attempted assault in the second degree. Zeldin was not injured and he was back on the campaign trail today. He targeted bail reform. Not only do I feel like it contributes to rising crime, you could see with last night's story, I would also argue it's anti-criminal in a way where that person that you're advocating for to try to get them out didn't get the help that they would have otherwise gotten if they had stayed there and worked with these professionals in the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Joining us live now is attorney and legal analyst Barry Covert. Barry, always great to see you. So hang tight with me for one second because we do have a little bit of breaking news. And I mentioned this a moment ago. We just got new information from investigators. This is the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. I mentioned that it's a second degree attempted assault charge here. Um, the suspect was um, allowed to be released because this is not a charge that is bail eligible. So that, of course, we already knew. The judge also issued a stay away order of protection um, and the removal of firearms, although we're told they didn't find any when they searched his home. Um, they did a, a search warrant at one o'clock this morning. No guns were located. Additional charges are possible. So those are kind of the high points right now. Um, there were also reports that he seemed to have been intoxicated and he had said to investigators that he had been drinking. So maybe that's a factor. He also claimed to be a military veteran, though that has not been verified. So with all of that said, Barry, I think what's interesting here and what people are trying to make sense of is this charge that he faces. It's an E felony. It is a, a attempted assault in the second degree in the second degree um, and not bail eligible. So walk us through what that charge means, how serious it is and and why is it that someone can be charged with that and a judge can't set bail for them. It's a very serious charge. If he's found guilty of an E felony, which is the lowest level of the felonies from A through E, he's looking at one and a third to four as the maximum sentence he could face. And obviously it depends on whether he has any prior uh, convictions of any misdemeanors or felonies and, and all that will play into it. So it's a very, very serious charge. But the Bail Reform Act, all it's saying is that we shouldn't presume that people are not gonna show up for court. And as long as we, there's no history of them not showing up for court, uh, there's no, and they're not violating orders of protection or violating other instructions from the court, there should initially be an assumption that we can issue some type of a recognizance uh, to, to come back to court. And as long as the person comes back, that's what we're trying to achieve when we have an arraignment. We're not trying to punish someone before they're convicted. And that's sometimes what it seems like I'm hearing, which is, why aren't we putting that guy in jail? Well, we're not putting him in jail yet because he hasn't been convicted of anything. We're all presumed innocent, regardless of how serious the offense is. And until there's a jury conviction or a plea, we should not assume that the person's guilty. What we should assume is that they're going to show up for court. And if they're not going to show up for court, then we arrest them again. Perhaps eventually we set a bail. And that's really what the Bail Reform Act is indicating is we don't need to house everybody in jail pending the outcome of the charges. Now, if he violates the orders of protection, if he violates the order against possessing weapons, uh, if he doesn't show up for court, then that's going to be a different ballgame. But right now, there's a presumption that it, with respect to the, the nonviolent offenses, that there is going to be an appearance by this individual at court in the future, and that's the purpose of bail. I want to show our viewers uh, how this has been reported by some outlets. So the Washington Times uh, earlier today, uh, this is their tweet along with their story, and they called this an assassination attempt. Um, and, and that's why I think some people are wondering how someone um, would not be remanded to jail. Do you think that assassination attempt is the wrong language here? 
Um, or is it just that, that you can attempt an assassination and, and not necessarily be held in jail while you go through the process? No, I mean, if they want to get as many clicks and viewers as possible, they're going to use the phrase assassination attempt. So it's probably the right word. Legally, it's not the right word. Okay. Uh, right now, we don't know. I don't know exactly what weapon. There were an indication he had a knife, then some type of a weapon that had the face of a cat on it, a self-defense weapon. It's not clear what, what was going to happen. I don't mean to make light of it. It's a very serious situation. It should be handled very seriously. But we should not have a presumption of incarceration before someone is found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That is not reasonable. It's easy to look from the outside and say, well, how can this guy be free? He can be free because he hasn't been found guilty of anything. Um, there's also been a lot of talk about the weapon, as you just mentioned there. There is a little bit of new reporting on this as well. Um, according to NBC, witnesses and now also some information from investigators that it was this kind of hard plastic keychain of a cat's face. Um, and it does have two sharp edges. They're like pointy ears, kind of used as, as self-defense. Some people keep this on their keychains in case they're attacked. Um, and they can use this, you know, I think as I'm familiar sort of a with weapon. Those on commercials. I remember some commercials on something along those lines. Exactly. It's really not meant to be a weapon. It's meant to be a an item of self-defense, which would really lend itself to, you indicated that there was reports of intoxication. There were some mumblings that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Sounds like we may have an individual here who was under the influence and or has mental health issues or both, combination of both. Uh, but it doesn't sound like he brought a, a pistol, a rifle, a real knife to the scene. It really doesn't sound that way. You can see a shot of it right there. Um, and then it, it kind of dissolved there to the suspect on the ground. Um, although it, you can use something Thing yeah. like that most certainly as a weapon. I mean, you think about how awful this could have been if he had, for instance, lunged at, at the throat of the candidate or yeah. something. Um, I'm not trying to minimize. I sure. wouldn't want someone attacking me with that weapon in Absolutely. a million years. And I certainly wouldn't want someone to do it without me realizing it, which is what he appeared to be trying to do, which is jumping him. But when it comes to the Bail Reform Act, that's a whole different issue. That The issue there is do we incarcerate people before they're found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Interesting stuff. I, before we run out of time, we're almost out. I want to ask you about this other story that made news today, this arrest of somebody on the other side of the country who was accused of making threats towards Buffalo, specifically the tops on Elmwood Avenue. Um, there was an arrest in that now out in Seattle um, calling in the threat. How serious? I know you have the... Very, it's the, very serious. The, I've the got the charges. There. I looked at the statutes. He's charged with using interstate commerce to either threaten to either kidnap someone or cause serious physical injury. In this case, to kill people at the top store in Buffalo also at a restaurant in California. He specified apparently in the tops call that he made to Buffalo that he was, was singling out non-Republican states, that, that hmm. he was looking for those states to try to terrorize uh, the African-American community and cause a race war. Uh, it was very serious. Um, allegations here. He could face up to five years incarceration for each of the calls he made, one to the tops in Buffalo, the other to a restaurant in California. And this happened um, again at the tops on Elmwood Avenue, but of course right now, you know, this community still still dealing with the aftermath of what happened on Jefferson Avenue. Uh, Barry, a lot of uh, legal issues in the news, so thanks for helping us understand them. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.